Okay, we're going to start the second video of sensation and perception. We're going to look, first of all, at sight. What do we see? And first of all, when we look at what light is, is basically the stimulus input is light energy. The, the sun supplies the energy. It bounces off objects, and our eyes are designed to pick them up, and our brain to interpret what we pick it up. So the characteristics of the energy, uh, we look at wavelength, hue, and intensity. Wavelength is the distance between two waves, and we'll look at them a little more closely. But first, the electromagnetic energy spectrum is what is reflected. Um, our species of human beings, we're only designed to pick up this much of the spectrum. So you can see there's tons more here, all the way from AC circuits to gamma rays, X-rays, and here's our things you've heard of, infrared rays and ultraviolet rays. Now, other species may be different. For example, a bee can't see our red, what we see as red but they can see the blue or ultraviolet rays down below our, our uh, range of sight. So the property of the waves, again, we're talking about wavelength, is from peak to peak of a wave. So this is light energy. The distance between dictates which color we see. So if it's high frequency, these are close together. High frequency means they're close together, so many of them happen. The, the color we perceive this as is blue. If it's a long wavelength, then we perceive red colors. Okay, the amplitude is from the base to the top. Okay, and the larger the amplitude, the brighter the color of the wave, the brighter the color we perceive. Okay, and then the smaller the amplitude of the wave, we would see duller colors. So all those go together for our brain to know what to what we should be perceiving is what we're seeing in front of us. Many of you have probably dissected an eye in the past uh, in, in one of your science classes. But we're going to look at those parts, make sure you got them. We have the cornea, pupil, iris, lens, and retina. So when we look at those closely here, first of all, our cornea is the outer covering of the eye. Okay, it's that thin layer of skin. Next is the pupil, which is the adjustable hole or opening in your eye where the light will pass through. And around your pupil, we have the iris, which is the colored part of your eye, which is actually a muscle, which will either cause your pupil to dilate in darker situations to let more light in, or it will contract in brighter situations to allow less light in so that we can see those objects clearly. Next, we have the lens. So once the light passes through the pupil, it hits the lens. The lens is a transparent structure, and it will change shape to try and focus that light right on the back of our eye. You see this candle here that this person is seeing. It's it's goes through the lens and the image is actually inverted here. Uh, why don't we see it inverted? Well, we'll have an explanation for you in a little bit. Okay, and then moving on, we have the retina, which is the back of your eye. It's covered with many blood vessels, and this is where a lot of your, your sense receptors are and where phototransduction occurs. Phototransduction is the changing of that light energy into electrical energy that your brain can read in the, in the neural codes that are sent through your brain. So with the retina, again, it contains rods and cones. Rods and cones are receptors and they have specific jobs. For example, we have cones, 6 million, 120 million rods, so many more rods than cones. The rods are on the outside. We have a, a place where the light focuses called the fovea, which is the center of it. And around that fovea, are where the cones are located so they're in the middle the rods are around the cones they're on the outside on the peripheral our rods are really good uh, and are activated in dim light they don't pick up a lot of clarity they're not real sensitive to clarity and they don't perceive color your cones are where the color is determined okay and they're in the middle they don't work well in dull light but in regular light, they help give us clarity. Their detail sensitivity is high, so that's why we see things clear. Okay, so we have those. So why would a cat be able to see better at nighttime than us? Okay, so let's find out from Cougar the Sight Cat. This is Cougar. Cougar, how come you see so much better in the dark? Well, it's because you got way more rods. You don't have cones, so you can't see in color. And if you look at the camera, Cougar, right there. See, there's Cougar. Okay, and his iris works a little bit differently too, so his pupils will dilate much larger and allow more light in. Therefore, they can maneuver at night a lot easier than we can in the dark areas. They don't see as clear, 
but they see in darker. Oh, you had enough? All right, go away. See ya. Oops. Okay, so here's how the reaction goes, and it almost seems backwards. When the light passes through your eye to the retina, it's going to go all the way to the back where the rods and cones are the, of the back of your retina. But it sends chemical reaction to the next set of cells, which are bipolar cells. And then the bipolar cells activate the ganglion cells, which then sends it down the optic nerve. And this sends it to our, our, veins, bridge, our brain's visual cortex so we can actually see what we're trying to see. On the retina, parts that we didn't talk about, we have the optic nerve. This is this big chunk of stuff, and this is the nerve that sends it through your, uh, into your visual cortex and through your brain. We call this the blind spot because there are no sense receptors sitting right here. So when you focus something on this area, you won't see anything. Um, we'll do this in class if we haven't done so yet, uh, where we will stare at one of these cars and the other one will disappear. Um, but what's interesting when we do that is the car just doesn't disappear. The reason why we don't see it is it's focused on our blind spot, but our brain says there must be something there. So it'll fill in whatever was in the background. So you'd see white in this situation. And the fovea, once again, is the point where we want to focus our image on our retina. Okay. And then around there would be the cones and then around the cones would be the rods. We have special feature detectors which are discovered and these are how your there's certain neural reactions to what we see as far as the detail goes and when we look at people's brains when they are seeing things or like when they're observing things like they're actually there uh, we find there are certain places of the brain that are lit up that are, they're being used for example when we see faces there's this area in the temporal lobe that's lit up. Houses we see down here is lit up and back on the occipital lobe where we see houses and chairs, chairs. And it seems quite specific, but we don't really know if they're actually, um, you know, like single cells that store all the information for one or if it's a network, but it's probably like a, 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 a super network of cells that does this. However, people, you know, like if you have a stroke in the area where you see faces, there are people that have had brain damage there and they can't recognize faces they can see them but they have no recognition of who they are they can look in a mirror and not even know who they are so depending on where that damage is those feature areas are are no of no use to them and they don't recognize what it is that they're seeing and along that pathway from your eye into the brain there's parallel processing going on and we've talked about blind sight before but this is why you're processing all this stuff unconsciously and it comes together in one image that you can actually use um, to manipulate your way around our physical world um, but you're processing motion, you're processing form, you're processing depth and color all in different parts of your brain in different locations that basically come together. And we don't really know exactly how it all comes together from the retinal um, phototransduction into the idea of seeing a bird fly through the sky. But there's a ton of things going on there. In fact, we're talking about recognizing a face. When you recognize a face, there's about 30% of your cerebral cortex is actually in use. It is a complicated thing that we just do take for granted, but it's quite a lot of stuff going on in your head. So as far as color goes, there's a couple of theories and they actually, they both can work. Um, they can both be true. The young helmholtz trichromatic theory basically says that our receptors work in bundles of three, which are red, green, and blue. Okay, so red, green, and blue will, the different combinations of how much these are stimulated will dictate what colors we see. Most of our monitors in the past have been RGB monitors, and we see all the colors just based on how much a red, green, and blue pixels are stimulated in those monitors, and that's the idea with this. The other theory is about, it's called opponent process. And it says we have three sets of colors, but um, we have receptors. And one receptor is sensitive to red and green. Another is receptive to blue and yellow, and another one to black and white. So in a neutral environment, we don't see a color, but when one is stimulated more than the other, that color sticks out. So it depends on how much it is, um, stimulated for example to see you know a darker green the green would be very stimulated and the red would be relaxed okay so 
some evidence this is with after images and people that are colorblind. Most people that are colorblind are red green colorblind. So they have difficulty um, determining they can't see red and green. They can't determine what colors they are. An after image is like if you stare at this, if you stare at this flag while I'm talking here and just right into the middle of it, you can blink and stuff. But if we look at the opponent colors, what we're doing is tiring out. So remember we had yellow blue. So this section that is yellow, we're tiring out the yellow part of the receptor. The part that's black, black and white go together. So we're tiring out the black part. And when we look at the green, we're tiring out the, the green part of the receptor. So red will come through. Okay. I'm not sure if I explained that right, but it's yellow and blue, black and white, red and green. We're tiring out the ones that we're looking at. So now when we look at a neutral surface, neutral surface, we should see the opposite. So go ahead and look at a blank wall right now and blink and see if you actually see the after image. How do we organize our visual organization and interpret it? Here are the outcomes. So Gestalt is the branch of psychology. It looks at uh, perception and organization. Uh, remember its credo is the, the sum is greater than, or the, the whole is greater than the sum of its parts. Here we look at a Necker cube right here. And if you look at you know this, what we're seeing is basically eight circles with little pieces cut out, but our brain wants to turn it into a box when we look at it. And in fact, if we look at that box, it'll change orientation because it's not really clear what it is. So therefore, yes, the whole is greater than the sum of the parts. First thing we'll look at is figure ground. So figure ground is, the figure is what we're looking at. When we look at something, on a pen on a desk, it's easy to tell that the pen is on top of the desk. Okay, the, because the pen is the figure, the desk is the ground. Now in this drawing right here, if you are seeing, it looks like the, the firemen going downstairs, one after the other, you're looking at the black as being the figure, the white being the ground. If you are perceiving or looking at the arrows going up, then you're looking at the white as the figure and the black as the ground. We tend to group things together that are close together. It's called proximity. Okay, so often these lines are a little bit closer, so often we'll see this is three groups of two lines because they're close together. This must be part of it. So, you know, you go into a gymnasium and you see, you know, a group of, of 20 students all together and then sitting together and then a, a separation and another group and another group and another group, you assume that they are together. So continuity is another uh, gestalt idea and what we see here is probably a continuous line that runs through here however this may be like a semicircle and then it stops and then another semicircle but because it has this flow to it our brain wants to say well that must go together because that's how it sees things most of the time closure is the idea can you see the little looks like a triangle going through here the lines there is no triangle there but our brain wants to close things when there are our corners we're used to seeing it's called closure and our brain makes us see that okay so we're gonna leave that there that's the eye we're gonna look into the ear and stuff in our next video and we'll see you guys in class